it's a beautiful day. The sun is shining, the birds are chirping a lot, and I am doing a cooler shootout video, which I don't like, and you guys don't like watching either. So if this spreadsheet's all you're looking for, you have it right up front without having to listen to me ramble on about 100 plus hours of cooler testing. Moving forward, I'll be updating this spreadsheet with coolers I test in the future, so you know where to find it. Now for those of you who don't want data but want a quick summary, the NHL 9i is still my go-to cooler of choice for the S4 Mini or computer cases of similar size. No, it does not produce the lowest temperatures, but it does produce good results while making few compromises elsewhere. Its widespread availability, impeccable build and finishing quality, unbeatable fan, easy and safe mounting system, nearly flawless compatibility, and fair price make it hard to recommend anything else. Or take a breath. It even has by far the best packaging by 60 nautical miles, or three Thermaltake X9 cubes. So to shorten this intro and get to the good stuff right away, I'm gonna put all the details of this video that you probably want to know in the description below. So if you have a question or a comment, check there first, cause it's probably gonna be answered. One thing that is absolutely critical to know, this is not a review. This is basically just a summary of my tinkering because I wanted to share it with you fellow small form factor enthusiasts. I used the Asus Z390i and made UEFI changes to get the 9700K to stock Intel settings and verified it with Intel XTU. To measure ambient temperature, I took six total readings two times for each run, two local infrared readings on either side of the system, two surface readings from isolated metal objects approximately three feet from the system on either side, and two thermometer readings for the air on either side of the room. Results were then averaged. To measure CPU temperatures, I used Hardware Info 64, or HWINFO, or however you pronounce the abbreviation. From time to time, I would use my FLIR thermal camera and infrared on the motherboard and cooler fans to learn what was going on, but these measurements were not recorded due to non-repeatability. For the actual testing, I would boot up the system and run Prime95, small FFTS to part temp, which is about 10 minutes. Then I would launch Winfo64 and begin logging. I would record the data manually as well, shut the system off, and repeat the process at least one more time. Now oftentimes I would actually reset the cooler just to be safe and always if the temperature seemed high according to my intuition or if the cooler had a particularly exotic mounting system that I could have messed up. Now each row in my spreadsheet represents an average of run, at minimum two, but really up to five or more. After talking to an audio engineer who tests medical devices for his job, I learned that buying a decibel reader off Amazon would be next to useless and basically only be for show. I decided instead to simply capture the tones for you all to hear for yourself. I used a Zoom H6 with levels locked in and taped off a grid on my desk so the distance and position would be the very same every time that I would change the cooler. Now, I would later find a flaw in this approach. Depending on the fin direction, air could be pushed into the mic. Now, I don't have all the audio plus video recordings, and even if I did, I wouldn't waste your time showing you each one. So, um, interpret this data as you hear fit.
Now again, this is just a summary of my testing methodology. To see the full extent of it, please look in the description below. Because I cover so many coolers in this video, we don't have time for me to go over in detail the nitpicks about each and every one of them, so here are my condensed thoughts. Initially, I wanted to have a compatibility measurement for every cooler, or at least a ranking, but with the endless work this project seemed to require already, frankly, I gave up. Most of these coolers required me to remove one or all of the heat sinks on the Asus Z390i. Some worked with all the heat sinks, but would perform significantly better in an orientation that required one or more of the heat sinks to be removed. Now we've all known for quite a while that the LP53 is the best performing cooler for the Mini, but that statement comes with many asterisks. It's hard to get, has poor finish quality, it's expensive, and you need to buy the A914 for it anyway, so it gets even more expensive. In addition, although the mounting is quite simple, the tolerances are not well done, and you can risk damaging your CPU if you over tighten it. You also need to remove all the heat sinks on the Z390i for best orientation and compatibility. The Ace Tech 545LC I chose because it's a popular cooler for the Dan A4. The Ace Tech was clearly the best performing cooler out of the lot, but it's kind of apples to oranges, and if you place the radiator below the pump, then it actually probably could be in line with some of the better air performers. The Thermalrite AXP Full Copper is a glorious heatsink, and you do get a lot of money for your hardware. Or, no, reverse that. It's the most beautiful cooler of the lot, neck and neck with anything Noctua makes. Its 100mm fan is actually quite good too, which was surprising to me because it feels kind of cheap. It performs very well, and while it is a little bit noisier than the A914, it's not too bad. This whole cooler is big compared to similarly performing coolers, and it is extremely expensive. And it might not be compatible with your mini ITX motherboard unless you strip it bare. It definitely was the cooler that I wanted to like the best though because, oh man, it just looks glorious. The Samuel 17 is the dark horse here. I didn't expect it to perform as well as it did, but it performed very well. It had great compatibility, awesome performance, good looks, and decent mounting. It's too big for the Mini, which is a really big disappointment, and again, you do need to remove some of the heat sinks on the Z390i. I would definitely consider looking into this if you have a motherboard with less heat sinks and a case that allows for its dimensions. Now, as far as the bigger coolers go, the Big Shuriken 3 is <laughs> heads above the competition. In fact, it's one of my favorite coolers ever, I just wish that it was a lot smaller because, well, I can't use it in my favorite computer cases. But if you do have a computer case that can fit it, definitely, definitely check it out. I'm also going to make a special video for it because eh, it deserves one. Some of its mini highlights, it was very easy to install, had perfect compatibility with the Asus Z390i, and it performed exceptionally well with a great, great audio tone. Plus it looks good. Now the cooler that I am most angry with is the Jonesbow HP 400 Mini. Now it actually performed quite well and it fits in the Mini without really any mods and the orientation works with the motherboard mostly. It also wasn't really difficult to install, but it did have one major flaw, which is a major flaw. The nuts used to secure the cooler to the back of the motherboard require some paper washers to act as spacers. Now, I used four of them, one for each standoff, of course, but really you need to use the entire packet because if you don't, one of the nuts will make contact with parts on your motherboard and fry it. I learned this the hard way, so you don't have to. Now I could go on, particularly with some of the better performing coolers that I do like, but I have pretty much covered a lot of these on my channel already, so check it out if you want to learn more. So here are some thoughts on my findings. Firstly, I was shocked with how close all these coolers were. I thought for sure that I did something wrong and was quite frustrated, but after asking my scientist friend to analyze the logs and give me his thoughts, and while the long of it's complicated, the short of it is that the results were pretty much right-ish. Now, the only perfect way to actually test these coolers is to hook them up to some kind of constant output form of energy that's lost as heat. That's okay though, because my tests weren't really designed to find which mass of metal can theoretically dissipate the most heat, but rather, in the real world, how do these coolers compare? 
If these were really big, tall tower coolers, then we might be able to lock in the CPU and disable things like TVB voltage optimization, and then simply set the thermal protection to 105 and see how close each cooler got, but that was never gonna happen with any of these coolers. You can't overclock any of them, and disabling Intel's thermal management would give you a swift shutdown on the 9700K. TLDR, pretty much all of these coolers kept the 9700K's turbo boost for the same amount of time, and then they gradually went down over the same amount of time to a stock speed of 4100 megahertz, which is really respectable. Secondly, I was interested to see the performance difference between fan orientations on coolers that supported it. It appears that the cooler downdrafting towards the socket is far superior. Thirdly, I learned quite a bit about, well, lots of stuff from the mentor that helped me on this project. I am very grateful to him, especially because he donated a lot of the coolers and some of the hardware that I use to do these tests. He wants to remain anonymous, which is very magnanimous of him. Okay, this video was frustrating and really boring to make, and I'm sure watching it wasn't that fun either. But here we are at the end. So check out the links in the description because I'm going to provide a lot more data there if you're a person that really likes to see the numbers. Special thanks again to my mentor on this project, to Chad for sending me a big old box of coolers to do these tests, and to all you YouTubers who sent me in random coolers to test. If you would like your name in the credits, just simply email me so I can get you permission and put you in there, because you deserve it. Whew, alright, we knocked this one out. Till next time, peace.